young man. Um, he grew up in Columbia, South Carolina, which uh, is, as y'all know, is one of my favorite places. I'm going to just start by asking Todd to share with us, you know, a little bit about uh, where you live now, um, how you got to where you are today, and uh, a little bit about your family. Awesome. Well, like I said, good afternoon, everyone. It is such an honor to be invited to be a part of your Zoom meeting. Uh, most importantly, I feel like I'm back at home talking to the Carolinas, um, and it's, um, it's really excited to be among friends and family. Uh, I am currently, I currently reside in Bentonville, Arkansas, um, home of Walmart. So uh, I, I am originally from the inner city of Columbia, South Carolina. Not sure who's all on the call, who's from Columbia, uh, but uh, from the inner city of Columbia, which is um, a little, you know, area that was, um, you know, if you're familiar with Columbia, um, it's, it's closer to the downtown area, uh, but it's probably an area that I, does not really get a lot of visitors, <laughs> that if you're not from there. Um, but born and raised, um, in the low income um, area, which was the housing projects there. Uh, went through um, District 1, if you're familiar with Columbia, was, grew up in District 1 and um, graduated from Spring Valley High School in District 2. Um, and so uh, went on um, and received uh, my bachelor's of arts um, in psychology, bachelor of science and sociology from University of South Carolina. Uh, and then I went off to graduate school, in Illinois, um, and then ended to get my doctoral um, degree here at University of Arkansas, which brought me to U of A. Uh, but my passion um, for who I am and how I show up every day is to try to create spaces, um, an ecosystem of inclusion for all humans to belong and thrive, one bow tie combo at a time. Um, and so today I'm here in Arkansas with my wife, our dog Merlin, our cat Nyla, and a teddy bear. <laughs> we don't have 80 other children yet, uh, but I, we happily reside here, um, and I've also, also am a global inclusion leader um, at a Fortune 500 company, and I'm also a entrepreneur, and I have a leadership consulting firm um, that we do a lot of training and development around anything people um, and inclusion development. So that's who I am. I'm also currently um, Father of my studies right now at Harvard, um, I am a part of a, a cohort of postdoc students that we're focusing on um, building inclusion and examining biases in artificial intelligence. So that's who I am. I love, uh, I don't know, I love walks on the beach. Uh, I uh, love wine. I'm a connoisseur and I love bow ties. <laughs> And we're going to talk about those bow ties in a little while. Absolutely. We're going to, we're going to have to learn a little bit more about those bow ties. Now, Todd, you're a lot like me. You travel and speak at a lot of Rotary events. So a lot of people may think that Rotary is your full-time job, but just like me, that is truly not the case. You do have a day job. You mentioned a Fortune 500 company in your business. So tell us a little bit more about those. Yeah, so I am a I am a global inclusion leader. That's what I do. I know it's actually a job. Um, and so what I do in my day to day um, at this company, the company I work at, is logistics transportation. Um, we have a, over about thirty thousand employees across the uh, North America. Um, and what we do is we examine um, all things people, all things customers, all things vendors and community relations as well as to really examine the entire, as I call the ecosystem of the life cycle of how we all blend together to drive value for each other and create a very inclusive environment. And so most people really ask me, they say, well, Todd, what is your, what, how do you describe your job? You know, um, you know, I'm a practitioner, but I'm a gap closer. You know, I'm, I, 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 every meeting that I'm in, I'm examining to see what are the gaps, who are missing at the table, who is not seen, who is not heard, um, what are what what else do we need to do to innovate, um, and how can we do that all together based on our mission and vision and drive value for our customers, our communities, and most importantly each other? And so um, I'm a gap closer. I I think I am an influencer uh, because every day and every conversation could be tough um, because I am I am getting into what I consider a personal space. Because when you talk about diversity and inclusion, um, a lot of these things are uh, experiences that you bring to the table or things you may not be aware of. And so I think it's very personal. Uh, however, from a professional standpoint, it's a business case with inclusion 
And we have seen in research and we've seen in the market that if we get inclusion right, uh, we will all win. It's a win-win situation. And inclusion is including straight white old men. You know, it's not just a black thing, a white thing, a woman thing, a gay thing, a disability thing. It's an everybody thing. It's a human thing. It's human empathy. And so when we start with the inclusion statement and the business statement and really start with that why and why we're here, it really allow for my day-to-day to be uh, a lot more enjoyable because we're all on the same page. And we most times we see that we have the same goal. And I definitely want us to get to that that um, inclusion and, and in depth a little bit more. But before that, I would love for you to share with folks your involvement with Rotary because you yes. maybe came into Rotary a little bit differently than a lot of people. Um, a lot of us on this call maybe have been invited as adult or older business leaders and your story is a little bit different. Yeah, so, you know, well, actually uh, Rotary, I, as you all probably have heard earlier, like I was born in the inner city of Columbia. I didn't know anything about Rotary. Uh, and as growing up, um, I still didn't know about Rotary. And, and a lot of people don't know this, but I was really introduced to Rotary uh, while being at the University of Arkansas. Um, and let me tell you the reason why, because I was recruited to come work at the University of Arkansas. And you know, I was recruited very, I was very young and, um, and I was the similar age as the college students. And so my social environment was very different. I couldn't go out and hang out. And so, you know, the thing that they kind of sell in Arkansas is like, get out on the trails, go hiking, you know, go mountain bike climbing and all, all this stuff that I didn't do in the inner city. <laughs> so um, I couldn't, I didn't really connect with the community as much. Um, however, I had a mentor who worked at the university um, and he told me that if I really want to learn more about the community, go to the weekly newspaper. And the weekly newspaper to my surprise was the Rotary Club because of all the speakers that come in every week and talk about what happened. And then you have a lot of um, champions that's in the club and just great community members that really knows what's happening and how to do uh, and how to make the community better. So I was introduced to the club that way. Uh, but my experience since I was pretty young joining the club um, at the age of 23, and my club is pretty large. It's a 200 uh, plus club, and it's one of the mo the historic clubs of Arkansas. Um, and um, I really got introduced to youth services, and so of course, <laughs> being young, uh, it was really fitty, uh, but it was fun. And as I enjoyed volunteer at youth services, uh, I got I actually got volunteer because um, it was an overnight event for the youth exchange students, and I realized I'm the only one who could stay awake the whole entire night because all the other Rotarians was knocked out. They were sleeping <laughs> and they were supposed to be chaperoning. Uh, but I had a great time with the students and that's how I found my passion into Rotary, do youth services. And so I became very, uh, just a club volunteer and, uh, with our youth exchange program. And then over the years, um, I've been able to uh, continue my impact, um, not only just on our club level, but a district, regional, and international level. And so today I'm one of the youngest um, district chairs for youth exchange in the world. And um, I'm, I'm, I serve on several boards and initiatives with the Youth Exchange. Also, I'm a Rotaract sponsor and advisor, um, Interact Club sponsor, Ryler speaker, you name it. Um, and so that was my introduction to Rotary and I was sponsored by the Chancellor family um, to join Rotary. And so I, I've also completed a new generation services change. I um, lived abroad in Brazil uh, and I study at University of Capinas in Sao Paulo. Um, and now Rotary has literally opened my world. Um, I've been to several continents uh, speaking um, to Rotary communities and it has been beautiful. I love Rotary. This is why I say I love my family, um, an organization with a global mindset with local action. And so that's how I got invited to Rotary and I never turned back. I'm still yet here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're glad you are. So one of the uh, priorities in our district this year has, has been the creation of our first ever Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. And I'm very excited and proud that that has happened. Gaia Goldman is our district chair, and many of the folks on this call are involved in that committee. Um, others are encouraged to participate. We are we will welcome anyone on that committee. And one of the things that I've said to our district this year is that just exactly what Todd just said, it, 
it's not about the color of your skin. It's not about your sexual orientation. It's not about your gender preference. It's not about your religion. It's not about any of those things. It's about all of those things. And it's about more than just one of those. And for me, it even includes things like our vocation and our financial stability and position. Um, and I've said numerous times that I will never be that district governor that could write a big check to the Rotary Foundation. I'm just trying to figure out how to pay my mortgage every month, like a lot of other people. And that we need to be conscious of equity and diversity means inviting those folks to join our organization that are different from us. Um, in every way, whether it's their position. I have an eBay store. I mean, who would have thunk, right? Or whether you're um, an attorney or a physician or a banker or a public speaker or, or a retiree, it doesn't matter. And if you're black, white, Indian, it doesn't matter. We're all different. And that's, it's really been enlightening to see that, 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 that growth in our district this year. So I really want you guys to hear, not from me, but from Todd, about his definition, if you will, of diversity and inclusion. And, and how do you think, Todd, that really looks in Rotary? It, we're at the very beginning stages of it here in our district, but share with us what you think it looks like. Yeah, so I let me, I would start with how I position diversity um, and inclusion. You kind of heard about it a little bit earlier in my statement, uh, but let's start with diversity, okay? Diversity is twofold. It's visible and invisible differences that make someone complete. So visibly, you may see I'm a nice, good-looking brown man on this webinar with a bow tie you know that's my visible difference but invisible you may have not known that like I said I I lived abroad in Brazil I can speak a little Portuguese and Spanish I'm one of 13 kids uh, I fly often but I'm afraid of heights um, so to Tiffany point you know diversity is you know deeper than just what you see on the outside it's also what you have on the inside however how we have how we have learned diversity as a human thing is more a perception on how people show up within their first seven seconds um, and so it's usually more of your perception of your what they can see and what they can relate to and to put it in the in a bucket but understand diversity is twofold and they're both equally as important important okay um, inclusion is being able to respect all those visible and invisible differences to create a high achieving, high performing, equitable environment that everyone feels safe, seen, and heard. Now, I put heard in my definition because how many of you all know, people can be doing a lot of talking, but that does not mean anyone is listening, okay? And what we see in our research is that people just wanna be seen and heard, okay? Um, also, I put another interesting term, equity you know, equity instead of equality. And let me just break it down, something simple, the difference. So equality, let's think of a shoe. You know, I wear a size 11 and a half shoe. And you get a shoe, Carrie, Malto, you get a shoe, Tiffany, you get a shoe. It's like Oprah. Everybody on this call will get shoes, okay? That's equality. Everyone gets a shoe. Equity is giving everyone on this call a shoe that fits them. Now that takes some that takes some effort and energy because you know why I have to really like let's let's do this as an example Carrie um, if you can hear me uh, Carrie tell me uh, what size shoe do you wear and what's your favorite color eight and a half and green okay so Carrie I wear a size eleven and a half and my favorite color shoe is brown how would you feel if I asked you to wear my eleven and a half brown shoe and I give it to you to wear it every day how would that make you feel um awkward but awkward. wanting to be appreciative <laughs> okay but this is interesting thank you carrie this is interesting what she said she said it will it will make her feel awkward but but she want she she's still going to have some gratitude and this is so interesting about this case study is that i've given carrie a shoe that feels comfortable to me that is uncomfortable for her to wear but yet she still will choose to wear it even if it make her feel awkward. And I want you all to understand something there. We have people showing up to our jobs, to our community, to the Rotary Club every day with shoes that was given to them that does not fit them, but they're expected to wear. And you are engaging with them and you don't know how they have learned to be comfortable in something that they consider awkward every day. And so what I want you to understand is you say, well, what does this look like for Rotary? Well, our theme this year is Rotary Connect the World. Our theme next year is Rotary op Open Opportunities. I believe that Rotary Connect the World to open up opportunities. However, 
if we don't understand how to treat our members and community members in an equitable way, those opportunities can have closed doors because everyone does not show up the same way every day. And we all know that on this call, we have people in our communities, they have different access. So they have different exposure, they have different practice, they have different swag. And sometimes our biases can get in a way, known and unknown, unconscious and conscious, of how we treat people and who we even recruit. And let me hit on something a little bit hard, even where we serve in Rotary. And I love, and you know, just in case I never get invited back, you know, I have to say all I can say right now, but I will tell you this, and this is not a criticism, but some clubs, some cultures do more service abroad versus the service in their own community, in their own backyard. And I'm talking about the backyard where I used to live at in Columbia, South Carolina. I've never heard of Rotary Club. And so I'm not saying that our Rotary Clubs are not doing great work. I'm not saying our Rotary Clubs does not have great people because of volunteers like you and I, we are actually making the world go around and around. I'm just stretching your thought to think about what does diversity, equity, and inclusion looks like in Rotary? It's a culture, it's a behavior, it's a practice. It's a thoughtful, it's an intentional process of really understanding who is seen and who is not seen and who is heard and who is not heard. And how can you have a more collective and inclusive voice to reflect your communities, to make sure that your club look like your community, as well as to ensure that you have a culture that if anyone come to your club, they feel welcome and invited. Uh, and I have learned in this practice, a small, change, a small change can make a big difference by you smiling and showing your teeth while you have them, you know? Like that's a small change. It can make a big difference. It can really brighten up the day. So to your point, diversity, equity, inclusion, that's how I position those statements. And I think that's what it can look like in Rotary. You know, diversity is one of our core values in Rotary. You know, as a, or as a global organization, we are very diverse. However, as we go into the communities, we see less diversity. And I just ask the question, you know, why is that? You know, I don't have a silver bullet, it's no one size fit all. But if we start asking these challenging questions um, and, and leading with the conversation of inclusion and not diversity, because how we was learned about this in the States, most people have learned, you know, this to be something that you're attacking. Uh, we have seen this in corporate America, you know, with certain counterparts, you know, you talk about diversity, you're like, oh, you're trying to steal my job or this is not for me. But if you talk about inclusion, that's for everyone. So lead with inclusion and back into diversity, but most importantly, ask those tough questions and challenging questions about culture. Because once you understand about the culture and the mission and the values, you actually see everyone has good intentions to go um, the same place, which is trying to create a club in an environment that everyone can be their best self. So now you guys are seeing why I invited Todd to be at our district conference, because he <laughs> has an incredible message to share. and. Uh, I wish you could meet him in person and hopefully you will at some point. But so Todd, um, I know right now the catchphrase that we're all hearing is social distancing. I personally have a problem with that. I, I think it's physical distancing, but we are all connecting socially, maybe more so than we ever have before. So in this time of physical distancing, if you will, what are some things that we need to be conscious of when it comes to inclusion that you speak of? Yeah, so you know, it, it is a very interesting time. Of course, it's uncertain um, and we are all, um, you know, we're all experiencing it differently, depends on, you know, our, you know, your scope and what's happening. First of all, I do want to say thank you to any of the first responders, if they're on this call or if they're in your family. Uh, my heart goes out to them and I am, a, I am very, very appreciative of their work every day. Um, but I, I, and I also want to say thank you to you all for continuing this engagement um, to have connectivity among each other, because that's one of the things that's very important in these times is people want to feel like they belong, they have a sense of purpose, and they want to connect. So you guys are already doing that by having even joining in today for this conversation. But it is some things that I, you know, that comes to mind that I try to encourage people to be mindful of through these times. And the first thing that comes to mind is mental health, mental health and mental stability. And everyone is coping with this very differently, right? It depends on, like I say, your experience, your culture, et cetera, so many factors, social factors um, about your mental health. First, you have to take care of yourself. And I, I put this diagram out on my Instagram uh, feed 
but it's three zones that you can potentially be in throughout this uncertain times. The first zone is a fear zone, right? Is this is that zone that uh, you you are you are fearful and you are maybe buying everything from the store or you are you you don't have a lot of hope about tomorrow or you're experiencing death and you don't know if it's you know creeping into your your family or, or your parents or your grandparents etc. Um, it's you're 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 living in fear and and I would tell you I'm not saying that zone is bad because some of us are still in that fear zone. But I just want you to recognize which zone you're in. The next zone I consider is the learning zone. And this is the zone that you have started to accept things um, and you're still been a little fluid, you know, you've still been a little conscious and you started to make a plan for yourself. What would this experience look like for me throughout this uncertain time? So I may want to learn a different skills, a different hobby. I want to clean my house, you know, do spring cleaning or you know, my wife had me a whole to-do list because I travel so much. So I'm like being very domestic right now. But, you know, I'm doing a lot of learning and appreciative, you know, of what she has done. And the next zone is called growth zone. Now, this is the zone that now you have not only focused on yourself, but you're able to focus on others and help others grow through these times, right? Um, and you're able to spread your joy and spread positivity. Um, and you want to understand which zone you're in. And like I said, you can be in any, you know, zone depending on your situation and circumstance. But we have seen in the mental health field that the most healthy, the healthiest zone is the growth zone. So that's number one. I want you to understand which zone you are in and where you're aiming to go. Number two, uh, this virus have no, uh, you know, have no target based on race, gender, background, etc. Okay, this virus can attack anyone. However, due to the systemic issues in our economy and especially in the states, the way people are getting care and access to resources um, is different. And I and I'm not gonna. We don't have a lot of time to go through all of those things that we're seeing. But I just want to put that on your radar: is that everyone is not as privileged as we are to even have this connection today, to even have internet in our homes. So we have some rural areas that cannot connect. Uh, we have people losing their jobs. We have people don't have access to health care. Uh, we have care, you know, caretakers who can't go and take care of the elders. Um, and so I want us to, you know, to think about the unseen and unheard. And ensuring that if we have something of value or service that we can do, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you all are doing within your clubs, um, you know, continue to engage in that. So be, that's how you can build inclusion in these areas and also have the conversation. Um, the next point I would say is that um, you want to also don't get overwhelmed by the social media. You could be social media fatigue. So I encourage people to also unplug, <laughs> unplug from the virtual happy hour, the TikTok, the social media challenge, this, this, unplug, give yourself a rest, give yourself a rest. If you can unplug, you know, do that because you don't want to feel like you have to do everything. And, um, and some, you know, if you can do something to have some connection, that's great, but don't overwhelm yourself because you want to, you want to be good to yourself so you can be good to everyone else. Um, and then last but not least, I just try to encourage people to um, you know, come out of this time as with innovation. I think this has actually really disrupted a lot of industry. It disrupted Rotary, right? We're canceling events. We're more virtually engaged. Even though we had e-clubs for like the last eight years, they're like, yeah, look at us. Yeah, we, welcome to our world. <laughs> but it has definitely changed the conversation and some scope of Rotary and how we can potentially do programs in the future and also how we can connect with each other. And so I hopefully the, these times will help us innovate because it, it's in times of discomfort where innovation happen and at its best. Um, and so I would say, keep those things in mind. I'm very hopeful, I'm inspired. Uh, I'm also, um, and my reflection, you think about our elders and the individuals that's in nursing homes. They're in isolations without this virus. And it really just heightened my empathy level of this is how they feel when no one come and visit them, when they have no social interaction. Because you are right, it's, it's, not, it's physical distancing. But you think, I, that was really was weighing on my heart this week. It's like, let's think about the people who don't have the access that we have and how can we come out of this 
uh, this uncertain times with a better thought process to be more inclusive um, and empathetic towards each other. Um, and so that will be my thoughts around what's happening now and what we can do as Rotaries do exactly what you're doing. Uh, be service above self and um, continue to check in each on, on each other. Um, continue to do those um, virtual conversations, but also um, do what's best for your community to make a difference. Absolutely. And I think that um, these meetings are a great example of the fact that we are learning to do things differently. We're trying new things. Um, for those of you who don't know, last night we inducted a new member into our Passport Club. We've inducted awesome. several members online in the last few weeks. But last night was our first dual Rotarian and Rotaractor, um, a young wow. lady named Lydia Harris from Hendersonville, who um, many of you know, and she joined our Passport Club last night. She's also a member of the No Borders Rotaract Club, which which is a Rotaract club that literally has no borders, much like um, any e-club. And so it's exciting to see that we are figuring out ways to do things. So um, my, my, my challenge, I guess, to each of you on the call is to join us again next week. We're not done. I, I have a few more questions for Todd, but I want you to be thinking about who else do you know, not just in your Rotary Club, but in your community that has something that they bring to the table that, that is diverse and different from you, um, that uh, or maybe the same as you, but maybe different, that you could invite to our meeting next Wednesday um, that could learn a little bit more about what we're doing. And I was glad to hear Todd mention uh, the the whole mental health issue, that it actually is going to be our topic next Wednesday. We have Dr. Mary Berg, who is a Rotarian from uh, Pennsylvania, and she's going to be, she's a clinical psychologist. She's going to be talking to us about how to stay sane during uh, this physical distancing issue that we're all going through. So I encourage you to think about who you might invite to join us next week on this meeting that might want to become a member of your club because um, a membership, foundation, uh, public image, all of that is gonna continue to go on even though we're not meeting in person. So Todd, I wanted to ask, you mentioned it briefly earlier, your bow ties, and, I, and you're, you're wearing one today. I can't say that I've ever seen you not wearing a bow tie. Uh, and his nickname, as you can see on the screen, is Bowtie Todd. But tell us a little bit about the story of the bow tie. I think folks will find that interesting. Oh, yes. Yes. Not a problem. Well, you know, I, I do wear bow ties often, but the only time, this is a secret, that I do not wear my bow ties, of course, is when I'm sleeping in the gym and on the beach. <laughs> I don't wear bow ties then. Uh, but, um, you know, this bow tie, uh, of course, as a necktie, it's a, it's a brand, uh, but it's, to me, it's deeper than a brand and a fashion statement. Uh, it's something that I've seen as I continue to wear them, and I started wearing them in college, uh, that people will come and interact with me daily or weekly um, as I go out in the community, and they're curious. They're curious about the bow tie. Did you tie it yourself? You know, uh, what, you know, what's your story of what, you know, why we like to wear bow ties? Or people say they're cool, or they just make positive comments. I haven't really heard a lot of negative comments, or at least they keep those to themselves. <laughs> uh, but I would tell you that what I started to think about is that, wow, um, people will come and engage with me, and it's not about my race, and it's not about a stereotype, um, they are just generally curious and they are curious to, and they are starting the conversation. It's up to me uh, how I want to leverage or respond to that conversation. And so what I started to do is I started to learn their story. So I don't really keep it. I was like, yes, I, I taught it myself. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Um, so tell me more about yourself. And so what I, I've seen and I, and I was able to coin um, it's a bow tie story model and an acronym of how they engage with difficult conversations uh, because I've seen in my research is that when you talk about race and diversity, et cetera, these issues that as minority community and you don't experience them, it's very difficult to talk about due to you not knowing the nature of, you know, the sensitivity behind it or, you know, maybe you're not as informed about the community, et cetera. And so I'm going to teach you really quickly what the acronym stand for. I created an acronym and a curriculum, but you can check more about it on my upcoming podcast, by the way. But uh, let's start very simple. The first letter is B. So B in every conversation. This is something that can help you out in conversations and presentation. B stands for to be, B-E, mentally present. Okay, um, we know that sometimes we can be physically present at conference, but we're not always mentally there, um, even in conversations, day-to-day -day conversations. So the B stands for be mentally present. 
O stands for be open to new ideas, open to new ideas. So it could be things that people say your way in conversation and presentations that you may, you know, disagree or agree with. I'm not asking you to agree with everything. I'm just asking for you to be open. Um, it's an act of choice to be open to new ideas. W stands for willing, willing to share your own experience and own your own truth. Because everyone on this call have their own story and it's up to you to share it. But you have to be willing to share it when the when the time is right or when you need to um in, you know insert yourself okay and then the last part of the bow tie is usually the hardest part of the bow tie is this tie how do you tie this together and that's most importantly about conversation and presentations how do you tie it together so you was there you was open you share your story but now what what is your next steps and I do believe that if we apply that general concept, it's very simple. If we are present, if you're open and you share your story and you look at how you can come in better than you or lead better than you came in, um, as well as how you can improve, I really think we can bow tie this world to a better place. And I try to encourage people within this model is that we have, especially as adults, we have lost a lot of our curiosity. You know, uh, you think about the individual that's a kindergarten or, or second grade or first grader, they ask all these questions. You know, they ask like, why, why is it this color is yellow? Or we had, um, we had our niece, uh, some of our friends over um, a few months ago and they have twins and they were turning five and they, and they were asking my wife and I, they were like, wow, he is tan and you're brown. And you know, and they were asking the color difference, but they were curious, but it's something that happens when we get into the workplace that people are a lot less curious and people are, they, they're afraid to ask these questions, et cetera. And so I try to encourage in my bow tie philosophy is to be more curious, um, to be more present and to be more willing to share your story because I think we can all learn from each other. So that's the bow tie concept. Um, I, I guarantee you, if you want to learn more, you can look me up on Instagram. It's Dr. Bowtie Todd, Facebook Bowtie Todd. Um, so I would love to connect with you, but it's really just a conversation platform. And, and it's my philosophy um, of life and how I try to strive every day to engage. I know that the folks listening from our district are sitting there thinking, Tiffany doesn't have anything that defines her. We don't what? have anything special. The Rotary I'm, Geek. The Rotary Geek in those high heel shoes. That's right. Yeah. So, but Todd is right. You know, um, it's amazing the kind of questions you get when you walk through an airport in five inch rhinestone sparkly heels with a rhinestone backpack on your shoulder. Uh, people ask, where are you going and what are you doing? And I get the opportunity to talk about Rotary and the opportunity to learn a little bit about them as well. So um, he and I share that that philosophy. My philosophy with the sequins is, you, as you guys know, sequins are my Prozac. So <laughs> I have to wear them or have them close by. So Todd, um, we've got a couple of minutes left. I want folks to be thinking if they have any questions that they would like to ask you. But um, while they're getting their questions ready, is there are, are there any last thoughts that you want to share with us before we wrap up uh, in a few minutes? Yeah, well, you know, I always have thoughts. <laughs> uh, well, I will first say thank you again for having me. And I'm interested in if you have, I'm an open book. So feel free to put your questions in the chat box or send it to Tiffany. Uh, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you all for your heart, because uh, without you, our community will not be revolving. Uh, and thank you for what you do, seen and unseen every day, to make our communities better. And it's a really beautiful time to be a Rotarian. It's a needed time. We need Rotarians in these times. And I hope that we leverage these times and that we don't waste the space that was given to us to fill up to serve above ourselves. And so I hope that I encourage you and, 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 and motivate you to do bigger and more, but also bring others along with you. Um, one thing is, is that especially as I talk to clubs, of course, we focus a lot on women in Rotary and we do need, and we've been doing a lot of great things. We have a goal from Rotary International to have 30% we're a little, you know, uh, behind that goal because I'm on that initiative um, to help out. But also ageism. One of the things I see a lot of is like, oh, that's the young people. Let me have a young person come help me with the technology. Or let me get a rotor actor because they're so young and fresh. What I want you all to start, I'm going to encourage you and challenge you is stop separating young and old in your clubs. It's an everybody conversation. Um, let's put everyone at the table. Encourage a road director or a, road, a youth exchange member, interact member to be on your board. 
You know, um, these are things because we need everybody voices learning from each other. And I also understand as we strive for diversity, my little 30 minute presentation would not change your 30 ways of thinking. So uh, it takes more than just a, a conversation and a program at Rotary, uh, a one stop shop to make inclusion work. It's an everyday practice, it's a journey. It's not a destination, it's a journey. And based on your culture, it can look very differently, but it should start somewhere. And I'm glad that you all started with the DEI committee. And uh, because if you're not intentionally being inclusive, you can unintentionally be exclusive. And so uh, you have to have an intentional plan. So my thoughts with you all is that be proud, because uh, I'm proud to be a Rotarian. And I think you should be as well, because we are evolving and we are doing what we are, our mission and call to action to do. Um, so continue to do that. Thank you to Todd for spending time with us because he has a busy schedule, but this is an awesome opportunity for you folks to have an opportunity to hear from him. Thank you.